I'm a happy cow If I'm riding with my cattle And I'm always on the run I'm a happy cowboy You can bet your bottom dollar That you'll never hear me holler About the world on the range And I love to hit the leather In any sort of weather And I know I'll never change With my rope and my saddle And my horse and my gun Oh boy So when the day is ended Beneath the setting sun Our happy cowboys were Let's have a drink on that, eh? Oh, boy. Come on, fill up this little hot box. That's Joe's letter, ain't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what kind of trouble do you suppose he's in? I don't know. But it must be something pretty bad. Because Joe's not the kind to holler for help unless he really needed it. That's right. When he was riding range with us down in Texas, he always took care of any trouble that came his way. Sickness was the only thing that ever licked him. When his lungs went bad... But I thought he'd got well since he came up here in Arizona. That's what he wrote. Said him and his dad had bought a little ranch and they was going to stock it with some good cattle. Well, how far you reckon it is from here to Joe's place? About a mile or two from here. Come on. Let's go. That must be Joe's place over there. Chicken dinner? To throw the voice for a greater distance, it is imperative that... Is this Joe Jackson's place? Oh, yeah. Who are you? Who is who? Did that mule say something? Oh, I'm out here, then. Sure, he talks. Gable, say something for the gentleman. A tanky go home. A want to be a low. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bob Blake. I'm looking for a friend of mine, uh, Joe Jackson. Well, this is his place, all right. I'm Slim Perkins. I think it'd be a good idea if you go into the house and talk to Joe's sister. Joe's sister? Where's Joe? I don't know. Say, mister, would you sell me that talking mule? Well, now, I'll see about that. Hello. Are you Joe's sister? Yes. Well, uh, I'm Bob Blaine. Oh, yes. I've often heard Joe speak of you. I'm Betty Jackson. Joe used to work with you down in Texas, didn't he? Uh, yes, ma'am. But what are you doing way up here? Well, I had a letter from Joe and brought some of the boys and we come up to see if we could help out some. You say Joe wrote you a letter? When was it written? Says here it was written on the 16th. 
In Mesa Canyon. Thank heaven. Then he's not dead. Dead? What do you mean? I haven't seen my brother for three weeks. He disappeared just like father did. Only we found father dead, shot in the back. Did he know who did it? No, but Joe said he'd find out if it took the rest of his life. He was all worked up the day he disappeared. Said he'd found something, but wouldn't tell me until he was sure. And I thought they'd got Joe, too. But but that letter's in his handwriting, and... Now, don't you worry, Miss Betty. We'll find Joe, and we'll find the man who dry gulched your dad. How far is it to Mesa Canyon? Seven miles, due south. And you positively guarantee that this year could have can talk? You heard him, didn't you? Yeah, but what I mean is, will he talk for me like he talks for you? Boy, I positively guarantee that he talks just as much for you as he did for me. Come on, give me the twelve dollars, will you? Looks like you've bought some stock, Dusty. Bob, I've got the only mule in the world that speaks English. Speaks English? Yep. Slim here said his mule's papa talks too. But he only speaks German. That's no good, because nobody will understand him. This year mule speaks English. Dusty, did you ever hear of a ventriloquist? You don't mean to tell me that this here mule's one of them things. <laughs> no, not the mule, but Slim. Oh, well, that's all right. I don't care what he's suffering from, as long as the mule's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys, hit leather. We're going to take a quick look at Mesa Canyon. Which is the quickest way, Slim? Well, there ain't but one road, and it takes a bloodhound to find that. Speck a better ride in, would you? Okay, come on. That bird has got old Joe Hawk tied and staked out. He was there on the 15th, and it's my notion that he's still there. Now, the best way to start will be to trickle in there one at a time. Keep your eyes and ears open. And meet back here at 5 o'clock. Oh, let's make it full 30. I've got to get back to the ranch by 5 o'clock to give my mule a singing lesson. <laughs> <laughs>
the coyote howls at the harvest moon. Almost time for roundup. And you know Jack Frost is a coming soon. Almost time for roundup. Drink up, man. Bring me three more glasses. Fill them. Now drink them. You drink all that liquor. And you smoke all those cigars. And if you drop one drop of that whiskey, or you drop the ashes off one cigar, I'm going to let the daylight into you. Come on, smoke up. a little trouble, Dusty? Bob, that gentleman is just carrying hospitality too far. What's the big idea, fella? You didn't have that gun, I'd show you.
I wouldn't draw that, mister. Boy, I guess I'll be leaving us. Guess again, brother, guess again. Make yourself at home while I rustle up some grub. Okay, Phil. Okay, Phil. Be with you in a minute, fellas. I'm going up and have a talk with Miss Betty. Oh, there you are, partner. How you doing? Now, look here, Muse. You might as well get this straight right now. I'm the boss. And when I talk to you, you answer me. You saw of that? Now, this kind of action ain't gonna get you no place with me. Now, there you go, showing your ignorance. Is that polite? I ask you. Say something. Don't go on your hide. Hey, what's the matter, Dempsey? What kind of a job is this? Well, that fool mule won't talk. Well, I don't believe he can talk. I think about who I talk to. Was that the mule said that? Or was that you? You looking right at me. Did I say anything? All right, we'll start all over again. Say something, uh, Gabriel. Okay, Tut. You see? You got to call him by his name. Yeah? What is his name? Gabriel. Go ahead and call him that. Mm-mm. Not now. Why not? Go on away. You is just conversation. No huh? dollars for your worthless hide. I want them spurs playing poker with Slim. Is that Well, I don't know. Sure is. When the deck's got six aces in it. I was beginning to understand why Slim was so willing to save you. Ouch. Ra da 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 da
got the payday blues. Da, da. Don't you know nobody never got nothing from wheeling on a stick? Yeah. Well, I'm going to get something with this. Where are you going, Dusty? I'm going to get $12 with this. <laughs> Looks to me like Slim is in for some trouble. That's right, bro. Dusty's on the war path. <laughs> <laughs> Ventriloquism in ten easy lessons. and bought us on this place. Good morning, Miss Betty. Good, Good morning. morning. You look worried, Betty. What's on your mind? Mr. Thorne offered to buy the ranch. Of course, if Joe's alive, the place belongs to him. But if he's... Oh, Betty, don't give up so easy. I've got a hunch Joe's alive and well. And if he is, we'll find him. But it's been a month now, and no trace of him. Say... What does Bug Thorne want with this place? He's got a thousand acres over there without a head of cattle on it. What does he want with more land? I don't know. He said he wanted to help me out. Oh, Bob, if we could only do something. About Joe, I mean. We'll do something. Bug Thorne wants to help her out. Why, that hombre wouldn't help his own mother out of a tub of boiling oil unless it was something in it for him. Did you say there's no cattle on his place? Nary a head. But he's got a tough-looking bunch of hands over there, though. And I'd like to know what for. Come on, Slim. Let's find out. Did she say she'd sell? No, not yet. She said the place belonged to her brother. She couldn't sell it until she knew for certain that he was dead. Well, I guess that lets us know what to do with him, don't it? Yeah, we could fix it so she could find the body easy enough. I'm for making a last try to get him to sign before we... Ah, uh, you make me... Always wanting to do everything the hard way. The sooner we get him out of the way, the better. I'm running this show, Pete. You tried your rough stuff on the old man. And what did it get? Him? Well, they can't hang you any higher for two killings than they can for one, if they catch you. Howdy. I'm Bob Blake, friend of Joe Jackson. My name is Thorne. Don't bother to introduce me to your friends there. We've already met. What do you want with Joe Jackson's ranch? Who said I wanted it? Well, you do, don't you? 
No. I offered to buy it just to help the girl out. She can't do anything with it. Listen. Let me give you a little advice. Go back where you came from and mind your own business. You might first find out what my business is. Well, what is it? My business is to find Joe Jackson. Or the man that killed him and his father. That guy's poison. You ought to let me drill him. Next time I will. That's a promise. What do you make of that? Well, one thing. I'm sure there's something wrong with that outfit. Well, what's your next move? I wish I knew. Well, see you later. Hello, Dusty. How are you and Gable getting along these days? Fine. We had a long talk the other day. You don't say. Yep. I am to teach him some poetry. Poetry? Oh, man, that mule can't recite no poetry. You crazy. I'll bet you $12 that mule will recite poetry before me and the boys pull out of here. Now, that's a bet. Shake on it. Say, Dusty, you know how to play set em up? Never heard of it. But I'll play a little poker with you. Poker? Yeah, poker. All right. But with my cards. Come on. A little ride will do you good. I've got something I want to talk over with you. About Joe? Well, yes. But let's get going. We can talk later. Uncle, is your mule sick? No, sir, Miss Betty. He's sound in wind and limb. Then why are you walking? Well, you see, the cinch strap broke and I had nothing to fix it. Oh, we'll fix that in a jiffy. Mighty kind of you, sir, to bother with an old man like me. You're a stranger in these parts, aren't you? Yeah, my home's down Texas way. Texas is a mighty fine country. I was down there when I was a young man, but that was many years ago. Hey, Uncle. What might your name be? My name is Bob Blake. Bob Blake? Are you from Texas? Why, yes. Well, I do declare... When you cast your bread upon the waters, it sure comes back to you. What do you mean? Two or three weeks ago, I found a letter addressed to you, and there's no stamp on it. So I put one on and mailed it to you. You mailed a letter to me? From Mesa Canyon? That's the very one. Where did you find this? I found it in the alley back of Buckthorn Flume. 
Buckhorn Saloon. Are you sure of that? I'm dead certain. Found it right there, lying in the dust. Buckhorn Saloon. Thank you, Uncle. You've done me a bigger favor than you'll ever know. So glad. Bye, Uncle. So long, Uncle. Goodbye. What do you make of that, Bob? How come Joe's letter to be lying in the alley? Well, here's how I figure. They're holding Joe at that buckhorn. They left him alone for a few minutes, and he scrawled out this note. Then he heard him coming back, and he tossed it out the window, hoping that somebody would find it and mail it. And that's just how it happened. Then you think Joe's alive? I'm sure of it, Betty. So what'll we do? Well, I'm going to the buckhorn and get Joe out of there. You'd better come back and get the boss. No, I'll do better playing a lone hand. Now, you get back to that ranch, and don't leave until I get there. And don't say anything to the boys about it. I'll push the pot. Erasure. Listen, brother, put your hand under that table just one small, just one small, and the next time you go to buy gloves, buy one. I'll call you how many cards you want. Give me two. Two? Yeah, two. I thought you said two. I'll take two. You don't know what you bet. Hello, Miss Betty. Where's Slim? I don't know, Miss Betty. You want me to find him? Yes, tell him I want to see him right away. See you, Parker. Okay. So long, Dusty. I'll be seeing you.
Give me a drink. Sadie, you bring me a drink. Coming right up. Where do you think you're going? I'm going upstairs to the dining room. There ain't no dining room up there. You sit down here where you belong. Yep. No dining room. This is a heck of a dump. Bring that drink. You mean to tell me Bob Blake went into the Buckstone Saloon after what happened the last time he was there? You told me not to tell you, but I'm worried. You've got a right to be worried. Well, that place is a rattlesnake's den. I'll get the boys and get him out of there. And Joe Tooth is there. I'll never sign that deed. I know what you're after. You found a ledge of gold on your property. And it peeled out on your land and ran over on mine. I found it, too, the day you grabbed me. As long as you know so much, you may as well know one thing more. There's a million dollars in that ledge, and we're going to get it. One time. You should have let me finish him off the day he came to the ranch. Where's Joe? Joe? Yeah, he was here in this room. He must have went that way. Yeah, but can't Joe what? Man, you're lucky to be alive. What happened? I don't know. I'm all right. Give me my gun. Bob's got clean away, not a trace of him. Come on, we'll find him. Well, if you're not in the house. Horse is gone, saddle too. I guess he just 
side of the help. Lord only knows where she's gone. Take it easy, young lady. Joe's okay. But that man came to the house and said that he was here, and that he'd been hurt. He's here, all right. But he hasn't been hurt yet. What do you mean? Take me to it. All right. Come on. Joe! Eddie, what are you doing here? That man came to the house and said you were here and that you were hurt. What's the idea, Thorne? Very simple. Now, you wouldn't want anything to happen to your sister. Now, would you? If you'll both be nice now and sign this deed, why, nobody will get hurt. But you offered to buy the ranch for $5,000. The offer is still good. That's certainly nice of you, Thorne. But the million dollars worth of gold on the property. Did you find anybody stolen, Ray? Nary a soul. But I didn't really expect to. Did Miss Betty show up? No. Where's Dusty? I got scared, so I sent him to fetch the sheriff. Well, I thought his horse went lame. It did. He's riding Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Will you sign? It's Joe's ranch. And if he won't sell it, I won't. All right, Jack. How about signing that paper? This is you the rest. You and your gang killed my father. You may kill me, too. But you'll never get that ranch as long as I'm alive. Give me that iron. Stop them. Stop them, I tell you. You can't do that to them. Will you sign? No. All the boys. All the boys. Look, uh, there, there's Miss Betty's horse. It sure is. But where's Miss Betty? Suppose she's been thrown off? Oh, no, not Miss Betty. Well, let's follow this horse on the back trail. I saw him come out of the canyon. Come on, boys, hit let us. Come on, boys. There, now let him go. Not so fast. Watch her, boys. Where do we stand now? We're no better off than we were. It's no good without his jaw, Henry. But I'll get that, too, as soon as I make him conscious. Yeah, but what do we do with him after he signs it? What do you think? Still feeling obstinate, Joe? I'll feel okay the day they hang you. Where is this, a wild goose chase? That's as bad horse over there, ain't it? Yeah, but where's Miss Jackson? How do I know? Where's Slim? Where's everybody? Look at it, Sheriff. A lot of horses just went through here, and from the looks of those prints, 
They left mighty sudden. Come on, boy, let's hear those track leads, sir. You're the lowest rat that ever lived. But you can't be low enough to do that. Can I? Go ahead, Pete. Stop! Stop! I'll sign! I'll sign! No, Joe! Don't sign it! I'm not afraid of them. It ain't our hero. I'm sure glad to see you. Come on, Pete. You can settle your private score in a minute. In case I forget, remind me to kill you. Bring those others in over there. Let the girl go, Thorn. Listen, Buck. I'm tough as the next man. Shooting women. Is out of my line. Mine too. But what are we going to do with her? She knows too much. Now you listen to me. It's either them or us. Which will it be? Girl. As for me, I'd rather have the girl on my conscience than a rope around my neck. In order. Here comes the law! Hey, hey! Drop those guns! Hold in, men! Shoot to kill!
gun. I want to send a message, and I don't want no answer. Special delivery. You found the right address. If you can get those cutthroats to jail, I'll be in to swear out a warrant for them for murdering my father. If I can take them to jail, a man they're practically in jail now. Come on, boys, take them to town. What's that? Did the man have his will all rolled out? <laughs> no, Dusty, this is a deed. Oh, don't be ignorant. It's a deed. His land's will and testament. Oh! Did he leave you all his property? Nope. I won't be needing his property. That's a million dollars worth of gold on mine. That's why they want it so bad. Let me shake your hand. That's plenty money. Speaking of large sums of money, reminds me of our bet. What bet? Didn't you bet me $12 that I couldn't make that mule talk poetry? Yeah, but where's your $12? Man, I even own the clothes you're standing in. Well, I still got Gable in her. I'll bet you the mule against my clothes and my $12. Bet. Bob, hold the stakes here. Come on, hold the stake, Bob. Come on, let me see you make that mule go literary. Just keep your good eye on me, boy. There was an old geezer named Slim. I used to be owned by him. When the old rascal sold me, my new master told me he was going to get Slim on a limb. Wait a minute. He ain't through yet. You may wonder why I'm mutilated. To admit it, I always have dreaded but you all know Slim. I belong to him. Birds of a feather. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> you win, Dusty. Here's your money. Welcome home. Oh, don't look so bad, Slim. I'm going to give you back your old talking mule. I don't want him. I'm fixing to get married, and I don't want no talking mule around. No, mm mm. Mm mm. Well, guess I'll have to give him the bob. Bob ain't gonna want him. How come he won't? Look. Get along, mule. Keep on grinding. Get along, fool. Get along, you carry me back to home. I've been away, way for a long time. Now I will stay home for a long time. Get along, you carry me back to Yeah.